Hello, today we're going to have a look at a BBC Basic version of the um, Commodore 64 program which Robin Harborn recently featured on the 8-bit show and tell channel. It draws a kind of 3D graphical effect on the Commodore 64. Um, and I thought we'd just have a look at how different BBC Basic is to Commodore Basic and some of the changes I had to make to do it. I'm certainly not going to sit there trying to crunch the program to be as short as Robin's. Um, but it's just uh, hopefully going to be an interesting little exercise it was for me for a sort of 10 minutes or so to write it. Um, for anyone not familiar with his channel, he's had a long-standing favourite programme, which is one line of Commodore Basic that sort of toggles between a forward slash and a backslash. Now on the BBC in mode 7, the Teletext mode, the backslash unhelpfully comes out as a half symbol. Um, but if I switch to one of the graphical modes, then you get two slashes like this. Now in Commodore Basic it looks a little bit better because the Petsky character set um, has some special graphical characters that go all the way from the top left to the bottom right and vice versa, whereas these sort of leave a little gap because these are forward slashes and back slashes, not a proper sort of graphical symbol, but we can get much the same effect. So the way his program works is it just toggles between the two printing the two different characters and it does that with a sort of printing the ASCII values. Um, so in the BBC we don't even need a program to do this because we can use a repeat until at the um, command prompt. Um, and I just need to print a random character, so I'm going to do that with VDU which is the same as print character string on a Commodore BASIC or a lot of other BASICs. And I want a random number, um, either one or two, and BBC BASIC you can tell it what sort of number range you want and it will give you an integer number between um, one and the number you specify. So this is going to give me one or two. Um, and if I multiply that by 45, then I'm going to get either 47 or 92. And if I just do until zero, um, then I get the effect that he does, albeit not looking quite as nice. So I can stop that and you can kind of see the effect and I'll push escape. Now that's been his favorite for years, but he got recently shown a sort of more exciting 3D version, which I'm going to show you now. So that's ignoring the program for the moment, just have a look at what it looks like. So you get this kind of 3D effect with these triangles um, that sort of look like the light is coming from the top left and there's a sort of shadow on the bottom left um, and then there's a kind of different colour on the other side and it gives a sort of 3D look um, on the screen. Now in BBC Basic there's some differences um, obviously, I mean it's a BBC for a start, um, but it's it's interesting to see how the BBC approaches some things differently and it makes certain things easier and certain things harder. So here's the code that I wrote to do this. Um, I'll just walk you through it. So the first line is a REM statement, obviously, um, and there's a later BBC Basics included. This is with a REM and a little arrow like that to mean when you type save without a file name, you want the program to be saved under that name. And uh, that has been backported into a lot of utilities, including the basic editor that I'm using here. Um, so that's just a convention. Um, line 20 sets the screen mode to a 320 by 256 uh, for color mode, which you need to generate the effect. Um, and then by default, that mode will have some colors we don't want. So it will have black, white, red, and yellow. Um, and we really want the, the blue and the cyan that I'm using to generate the effect. Uh, on the Commodore 64, you have some nice shades of gray, but we don't have that on the BBC. Um, so I'm having to, to use the colors I've got. And what you do to set the color palette on a BBC um, is you get given those four colors by default, the red, yellow, red, uh, sorry, red, yellow, white, and black. And I'm gonna change the red and the yellow to be the blue and the cyan. So the first one, BDU 19, says change logical color. I'm changing logical color one to physical color four, which is the blue. And then all the zeros are just used. Um, they were left there for future expansion by Acorn, just in case you got a 24-bit color palette, which you know, at some point Acorns did. That was a bit of forward thinking of them. Um, and then we redefine logical color number two to be six, which is cyan, and again, some zeros. So those just set the color palette that we want. And then we don't have the sort of triangle wedge shapes that the um, Commodore 64 has in the Petsky character set, so we have to create those ourselves. So we can do that with VDU 23, um, which means redefine a character, and the 240 says redefine character 240. And by default you have a, a small number of characters you can redefine and you can reserve extra memory to redefine more if you want, but I'm happy with the standard set. So this first one creates a sort of wedge shape going from the top right to the bottom left. Um, with these increasing numbers like this. And the second um, character I'm redefining is 241, and that creates a wedge shape from the top left to the bottom right. 
then what we need to do is um, we need to sort of, uh, Robin explains how the algorithm works for this, but basically it involves a number that flips value every character as it goes across the screen and between the lines as well, and that generates the effect. Um, so I do that using B percent, that's an integer variable in BBC Basic, and I've put the whole program in a repeat until false so I can avoid using a go to. Um, I then use B not, so I, this toggles at every line. I then count the 40 characters across the screen, and then line 100 changes the um, B between each character as it goes across the screen. Z is used to pick a random number, either 0 or 1, and that's used to, to generate the random flipping effect as it goes across. Now as we go across the screen we need to set the colour of each one based on both B and Z. Now this is something where BBC Basic differs from Commodore Basic. In, in Commodore Basic you set a colour and then you decide do you want it reversed or not and the background colour, which could become the foreground if you reverse it, you're kind of stuck with that as being the colour um, for the cell, all you can really do is change the other colour. Now, in, in, on the BBC, you can pick any combination of colours, but you do it not by setting a reverse mode or not, you do it by se separately choosing the, the foreground and the background. And you choose the background colour by taking the colour number 0 to 3, in this case, and adding on 128. So this bit here kind of either sets the background colour or the foreground colour, depending on what B% percent is, because we're, B% percent will either be 0, in which case 128 times B% percent will be 0 as well, and then we'll be setting the background colour to 2, um, and 2 is the cyan colour that you can see I defined up, uh, up the top here, with the number 6. Um, or if it's B is the other way around, then B will be minus 1, and 128 times minus 1 is minus 128, so we'll be setting to colour 2. And when you set the colour value between 0 and 3, i.e. without 128 added, then you're setting the foreground colour. So these two lines basically set the foreground or the background colour depending on um, B, and obviously they which colour they choose is determined by Z, and we need to multiply Z by 2 because we're either choosing the white effect which would be colour number three, or we're choosing the dark blue, which would be colour number four. Um, I'll let you do the maths, and, and if you want to know how the algorithm works, then, then obviously uh, watch Robin's channel, because he goes through that in a lot more detail. And then what I need to do is decide to either print one of the triangles or the other triangle, depending on the random value I've chosen, and I do that by 241, because this is like print character, either 241, or we end up with Z being um, one, so if Z is 0, we print 241. If Z is 1, we print 240. Um, then we do next to go on to the next character along the line, and then the until false is to the next line. So that is pretty much the same program that runs on the Commodore 64, but there's obviously some differences. Um, now what Robin does in his video is he then goes through and crunches it all to fit on a single line. Now. He has to do quite a lot of work with that because Commodore Basic only lets you um, have a line up to something like 79 characters. Now the BBC is a lot more forgiving and you're allowed up to 255. So I can actually just bunch all this stuff up onto one line if I want to because it actually all fits. Um, and in fact I'll do that now. And uh, using this editor I can just keep pressing join and gradually my line will get longer and longer and longer and longer. There we go. So there we go. That was it. So Robin took quite a while to get that to work because he had to fit it all into 79 characters, but uh, BBC Basic's a little bit more forgiving. But that doesn't mean we can't do a bit more crunching. Um, so what I'll actually do is I'll load the program back in and do the crunching like this um, so you can see a bit better what's going on. So the first thing we can do to kind of crunch things is all these VDUs could just be compressed onto one line. Um, so I can just join this one and this one, and then I can just get rid of that, get rid of that. So that's saved a few extra characters. The other thing I can do is in VDU, you can, these normally print 8-bit values, but I can print 16-bit values by putting a semicolon at the end, and that gives me a least significant uh, byte first. So that's going to print 4 and then 0. And then this zero is going to print two zeros, so I can actually save a little bit of space there as well by doing that. And the other obvious thing is color is actually just set by sending control character 17 followed by the color number. So 
I can change that to that, and I can change that to that, and obviously that doesn't look that much smaller, but of course the, the really big thing here is I can join all these together um, onto one line and dispense with the extra VDUs in there. So there we go. Um, so it's not massively smaller, but you know, it's a little bit smaller. So let's join all that together. And there we go. So let's just run that. And that still works. Now, um, just want to see how big that program is. So that program is 205 bytes. Um, of course, I've got a rem statement in there. Don't really need that. How big is it now? 193. So Robin gets it down to like 60 something, um, and I could probably have a go at that, but I don't think I don't think I'm going to do as well as he does, and I'm not sure BBC Basic has the same sort of um, the same sort of hacks in it that would let me do that. But one one thing that probably is slightly interesting is that of course a big chunk of this program if I split these lines here the big chunk of the program isn't needed on the Commodore 64 which is setting the screen mode and setting the color palette and defining the characters um, because those are things that are already available to you before you start anything the, the only thing he has to do is use a poke to set the background color to light gray um, actually I think medium gray so if I delete that just to give an idea of how basic is doing compared to the Commodore basic um, so obviously this program won't work properly, um, but you know, it does at least make it smaller. I could run this and I'll get the same program, but with the, the wrong palette. Um, but now we're down to down to 100 bytes. So we haven't made it to Robin 60 something. Um, but I suppose I could get rid of these spaces. That might make it a bit smaller. Let's have a look at that. Uh, yeah, I'm, there's one left there. I don't think changing that false to a zero is going to help um, because I think they get tokenized anyway. So, oh, no, no one. run that again. There we go. So that's working, and we're down to 93 bytes, which isn't bad considering I've only spent a few minutes on it. Um, anyway, I thought it was an interesting exercise just to see how it compared with the, um, the Commodore 64 version. Um, anyway, the other thing that might be interesting is just the speed. Now I'm running this actually on a um, with a tube external processor, but it's actually a Pi Pico running um, here. Um, so all the sort of complex computational part, the actual basic part, is actually running on the Pico, which is, gives me something like a 30 megahertz 6, 8, uh, 6502. Um, so it's a lot quicker than a standard BBC. And then it sends the, um, the, the graphics to be printed over the tube um, by sending the VDU commands, and then the BBC, this this sort of slow two megahertz six five zero two, and the BBC is actually doing the screen. So the work's being split between the two processors, and that's one of the reasons why it's running reasonably quickly. But if you just want to see what it looks like without the um, separate tube processor and just running off the BBC internally, I can turn that off, um, and we can load in the, the program. I won't load the compressed one in; doesn't make much difference, I don't think and we're on the program, there we go, that's the one running on the real 6502 in the BBC. And if you just want to see what the crunched one runs like, this is one I crunched earlier, we'll run that, it runs about the same speed, not much difference. So I think it's a bit, quite a bit quicker than the Commodore 64 version um, when it's running on the built-in processor, but then it is twice as fast. Anyway, that's enough for today. I hope you found that as interesting as I did for a good sort of 10, 15 minutes while I was doing it. Um, if not, um, never mind, but I hope you found it interesting and possibly even useful, and see you next time.